Hi everyone, we hope all of you are doing well today. Welcome to the presentation titled Soaring to Success, the College Application Timeline. The title should speak for itself that we'll be introducing you to what the college application timeline looks like for ninth through 12th grade students. Um, and a little bit more information about all of your different roles, meaning the family guardian role, um, as well as the student's role in each of those items. All of us work as um, college advisors in San Jose. We're with UC Berkeley's Destination College Advising Corps. My name is Van Nguyen and I'm the college advisor at Willow Glen High School. Hi everyone, my name is Brenda Racinos. I am a DCAC college advisor at San Jose High School. Hello everyone, my name is Naya Roberts and I'm the DCAC college advisor at Leland High School. Hello everyone, uh, welcome. My name is Oscar Murguia and I am the DCAC College Advisor at Benderson High School. Hello everyone, my name is Victor Negret and I am the College Advisor at uh, Downtown College Prep at Upton Meadow. We are so glad to have all of you here. I'll transition to the next slide where Oscar will introduce our agenda. For today's agenda, we'll be going over the A through G requirements. We will get into that in the next slide with Brenda breaking it down. We will also be going over the ninth through 12th grade timelines, you know, so y'all can get an idea of what to expect. And we'll be going into depth into that, as well as college exams and parent and guardian involvement, how y'all can best support your student. Hi everyone, so we're going to go ahead and review the A through G requirements. So each letter A through G represents seven academic subjects that students are required to take to be minimally eligible for admissions at the University of California and also California State University system. Keep in mind that the A through G requirements are a sequence of high school classes that students must fulfill with a C or better. So let's go ahead and break them down. So the first subject area is the A section, which is history and social science courses. Students must complete a total of two years. The second um, subject area is the B section, the English, English section. Students must complete a total of four years of English. The third subject area is the C section, the mathematics portion. Students are required to complete a total of three years of mathematics. We do recommend students to take an additional year of math. That way they can be seen as more competitive when applying to colleges. The fourth subject area is the D section, the science section. Two years are required, but we recommend students to take a total of three years of science. The fifth year, the fifth subject area is the E section, a language other than English. Students must complete a total of two years of a language other than English. Keep in mind that two years of a language other than English must be the same language. So it can be like Spanish 1-2, Spanish 3-4, if that would complete it, or Portuguese 1-2, Portuguese 3-4. And then we do recommend students to take an additional year of a language other than English. The sixth subject area is the F section, the visual and performing arts. Students must complete one year of a visual and performing arts course. And the last subject area is the D sec G section, the college prep elective. Students must complete one year of a college prep elective course. And as you can see, we have a little flyer here on the right that lists all the subject areas and also how many years are required. So we'll be going on to the ninth and 12th grade timelines, kind of breaking down what a student, parent, and both parents, student, guardians uh, role should be doing into these, uh, each timeline, each grade. It's gonna be a little different, but we'll be going into those. So for ninth grade year, so definitely uh, what students should be, you know, you start thinking of, I know that they're in this, you know, they're straight out of middle school. I know they still in a sense have uh, three years of, so there's in a sense no urgency, but definitely to start thinking of areas of interest that you might have, you know, it could be a certain topic of books you might like reading. It could be a class that you might really have a heavy interest in. So definitely you start thinking of that. It could even be a TV show, right? You know, you could still come blend that in together and see like what interests you might be uh, leaning towards. Uh, definitely uh, becoming aware of the A2G requirements, as Brenda mentioned, you know, making sure that you're getting a C or better in these uh, A2G requirement classes so you can maintain the eligibility, you know, for CSU and UC. Start creating relationships with your counselors and teachers, which is very important, you know, down the line, especially as you do get into your 11th and 12th grade years, it's important to establish a relationship so they can know you and they can start uh, uh, knowing you better and definitely um, keeping in track with what your grades are, seeing what eligibilities you do have and what requirements you're meeting. 
uh, definitely for parents to uh, be supportive, you know, definitely be involved if possible with your students. Um, definitely, uh, I know, start asking questions how they're doing in school, start seeing what interest they might be having and seeing how they're, they're maintaining uh, that, you know, their, that fire going in, even though they are in the freshman year. Uh, definitely uh, both par uh, for both parents and students to so definitely start communicating, you know, start having small discussions, you know, like what, uh, what class do you really enjoy? What do you like about that? You know, start asking questions such as that. Uh, look for resources, definitely. I know that um, this is where they could start looking, getting into clubs they might really have a deep uh, passion for. Um, start look, start um, participating after school. Uh, it could be, you know, through ASB, through, through leadership, uh, as well as, um, you know, it's finding resources that are going to be a good fit for them down the line, especially as they do get to the 11th and 12th grade year, as mentioned. For the 10th grade, we really want students to focus on challenging their interests and getting involved in extracurricular activities. So participating in sports and getting involved in different clubs on campus um, will add to their college resume when they are ready to apply. We want students to stay on track for graduation, so making sure that they're taking A through G courses and maintaining C's or better in all of their classes. We want students to develop relationships with teachers and counselors. This is important for students who will need letters of recommendation um, once they're applying to colleges, but also for special selective programs um, that they can participate in throughout high school. For the parent, we want you to be supportive of your student, proactive and engaged. So making sure that if you see your student struggling, reach out to their teachers and counselors to find out the best ways that you can support them. Um, and by participating in presentations like this, you're staying engaged and making sure you're up to date on the best information to help your student through high school. We want the student and the parent to begin setting clear expectations. So making sure that there are, there's a clear plan for after high school and making sure that parents are finding ways to help support students um, through this plan. And communicating interests and explore together. So at this point, students may not know what they would like to do or study um, after high school, but asking questions can help the parent find different activities um, that the student may be interested in that would help them discover what they would like to do and explore together. So this could be going on college visits or um, participating in online programs to help the student understand what they would like to do um, for their future. In the 11th grade, we want students to stay on track for graduation. So again, maintaining C's or better in all of their courses um, and taking A through G eligible classes. For the student in the 11th grade, it's also important that if possible, they begin challenging themselves by taking AP and honors classes. This will help them stay competitively eligible for colleges and universities. We want students to stay involved in the sports and extracurricular activities. This will continue adding to their college resume. Um, we want them to create a college list. So just begin thinking about schools that you may like to attend, maybe based on location or major. Um, and it's also a good time for students to start searching and applying for scholarships. So everyone is always concerned about how they will pay for college and who doesn't like free money. This is a great time for students to begin looking at different scholarships that they can apply to that will help them pay for their degree later on. Um, for the parents, we want you to, again, stay supportive and engaged. Um, some major questions that you could be asking your student are what subjects do you enjoy learning about and are you interested, what are you interested in doing after high school? Um, these can help students begin thinking of maybe not college, but also trade programs or just thinking of a way that they would be able to support themselves um, after they earn their high school diploma. For the student and the parent, again, we want you to be setting clear goals for attending college and making plans for after high school graduation. Um, it's very important for students and parents to begin having conversations about how the student will pay for college. Um, we don't wanna wait until the student has been accepted and admitted to their university of choice for them to find out that you know it may not be affordable. So there's ways that we can begin having this conversation now to make sure that the school that 
what the student chooses will fit both for the family and the student. All right, hello everyone. Uh, so we went through everything, we went through you know, the 9th through 11th, and now we're at the finish line, we're in 12th grade. Um, students are applying for scholarships, application, college applications, everything comes down to this, right? So uh, for the student, we have three, um, and you know, we're gonna kind of go through them and, and uh, discuss them. So the first one being stay on track for graduation. So this is a big, big, big piece of uh, senior year. A lot of students, um, you know, they get senior writers, they get a little lazy during their senior year. They're like, oh, you know, it's senior year, it's okay. I can go ahead and relax. And while that is true, they should be relaxing and, and taking it easy. Um, what they shouldn't be taking it easy on is their grades. They should really be, uh, you know, staying on top of their grades. They should stay on top of everything that has to do with, with their grades because what can happen, and it has happened to a few of my students, is, uh, you know, they go through the college applications, they get accepted somewhere, everything is going awesome, and then they fail a course or two, and their missions get rescinded, and they can't apply to that school anymore. They can't go to that school, so that can happen. So please, 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 students, uh, stay on track uh, for graduation. Um, the second section here is start and submit your college applications. This is a big part. This is gonna be basically, right, this whole section of start and submit your college applications. Um, it's going to take your entire senior year. It's not just starting your applications and then submitting them. It's checking your portals, making sure that everything's okay. So this really takes a long time. Um, so we really would like the students to just stay on top of all of that as well. And we as advisors and the school counselors and the teachers as, as well are here to help. Um, so please go ahead and ask for help for that as well. Uh, staying involved in clubs, sports, and extracurricular activities. Um, we highly suggest for students to still stay involved in clubs sports and extracurricular activities or if they want to go for something new if they've been doing soccer for three years and then you know they're saying you know what this year i kind of wanted to want to do football more than welcome to go ahead and do football you can still go ahead and put your sports clubs and extracurricular activities on your college applications that you are doing this year we can still go ahead and put those on there so that's not um something that should stop you from doing that just because it's senior year you can't try something new you should always try something new and this is your time to do that as well um so for parents slash guardians the big thing here, right, is be supportive and stay engaged more than ever. This is going to keep uh, your student super involved, and this is going to also keep your student um, motivated to just keep staying strong and keep moving forward. Now, of course, every student is different, um, but still go ahead and reach out to the student, uh, to your student, and, and check that they're okay, check how they're doing, if they need like an outing or something to go out somewhere to, you know, get something to eat or, you know, have a very like serious one-on-one -on -one conversation. Um, you know, please go ahead and do that. The biggest thing here is communication. The biggest thing here is, is uh, engaging with your student and making sure that they're okay. Um, and you know, that they're not going through a very traumatic experience right now and things like that, okay? Um, so questions that you should be asking. Have you started your college slash financial aid application yet? So, uh, you know, the one that comes after that is, do you need the tax forms? Yes, you do need the tax forms. Not every student is different, every situation is different. Um, so I'm not going to get super into that, um, but still the tax forms, because it is 2020, it would be the 2019 year uh, tax forms that is, you know, for Bachelor for the Dream Act. But again, every student is different. So please go ahead and speak with your advisor, uh, your school's advisor or your college counselor uh, to check in exactly what are the exact uh, requirements that you need as a parent and that um, your, your student needs as well. Uh, the next big thing is which, uh, which schools are you applying to? Now this is a, a big question that you should ask the uh, the student. And if you leave, if you need a little bit more support with this section, please go ahead and set up with a meeting with us or your or your school's counselor to make sure that you are getting um, the needed support to get your students to speak with you or, or things like that. You know, because at this time, like I said, students sometimes kind of shut off. Um, they don't they don't tend to talk too too much. Uh, so you know, staying involved and being supportive and staying engaged is a big part. Of this application of these applications in this year um, so on to the next section so both students and parents this is very 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 crucial um, be organized now I myself have an issue with organization um, I'm still trying to be better at that but for students please make sure that they are staying organized they should have a document where they're keeping all of their all of their passwords for their portals 
um, for any scholarships that they're doing, any type of login information, just for everything, right? Because it's so important um, to, when they come to us, to sit down, open up their portals, they log in and we start working on their stuff. Um, sometimes what can happen is that we spend a good amount of our meeting time trying to figure out their passwords and try to figure out the login information. And, you know, that takes a, a lot of time from, from our meeting times. So, you know, staying organized, um, not just for the parent, not, not just for the student, but for the parent as well, making sure that you have all the information and everything that you need, all your questions ready to go for when you meet with us. That's also super important. Um, so the three big things, right? The three big, uh, I guess, people that you could ask for help college access programs, all the people in those college access programs, such as us as advisors, um, the counselors at your school, or even the teachers. These three uh, sections are super, super important. Um, please, 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 if you have any questions, go ahead and ask for help. Um, sometimes what happens is that the questions that do not go, and do not go ask are sometimes the most important questions. Um, so please, if you have a question, even if you, if you think it's a small question, please go ahead and ask it. We're here to help you out. Um, and we're here to provide you with uh, as much support as we possibly can, uh, can as well. Okay, so on to college exams. So I have two important things here. So entrance exams, such as the ACT and SAT. Um, so here are some COVID-19 updates with this, right? Um, so technically, usually um, before COVID, we would say yes, ACT, SAT, take them, it's important. Um, but because with COVID, here are some updates with that. California State University and Universities of California would be suspending SAT and ACT as an admission requirement. Again, um, the CSUs and UCs are suspending SAT and ACT as an admission requirement. Uh, due to COVID-19, updates for exams are often changing. So please refer to the appropriate website for the CSUs and UCs. That is either the CSU website, the UC website, or you could go ahead and go directly into the school that your student is applying to and search for information on that specific uh, catalog for that school. Um, so should I, register, should, I, should I register for the SAT? So there is a secret behind that. Um, if you're eligible for a fee waiver, use it. SAT exam waivers can be used to waive UC application fees and other selected canvases. Uh, save slash archive your registration confirmation and if your exam is canceled because of covid some you know sometimes they're closing down facilities and they're changing to other places save your cancellation notification that is extremely important again because of covid there's so many changing factors and so many moving things if your uh, exam gets canceled go ahead and save your cancellation notification okay so uh, we highly encourage if you're able to take the exam mentally financially and uh, other factors to take the exam because of eligibility for certain campuses, um, specific scholarships sometimes have that as well, um, such as uh, UC Berkeley's Regents and, and other uh, scholarships. So it can aid in your course selection slash placement process and help them with university graduation requirements as well for the students. The overall takeaway from this information is that admissions will be test blind for CSUs and UCs. However, some private universities will be test optional, meaning they will give your students the choice to submit scores, making your child more competitive in their admissions process. So although they are suspended in the CSU and the CSUs and UCs, they can still go ahead and take it if they feel, um, if, if they want to, if they are financially or mentally uh, good to go. Um, they could go ahead and definitely go ahead and take these exams still, okay? Alrighty, so we've talked a lot about all the individual things that students, parents, guardians can be doing throughout in each individual year. I'm going to talk a little bit more about some things that you should be doing throughout that journey. Um, a little bit softer skills to, to go into communication as we start. First, I mean communication because we want to make sure that we're understanding each other's experiences. We want to make sure that we're understanding our children's experiences and where they need support. The dynamic happening right now in our world and in our communities may be very challenging, unprecedented, and are still things that we are working through. Even all of us don't have all the answers at this time. So communicating to make sure that we're on the same page as much as possible would be important. A couple of questions that you can ask yourselves and each other um, and to our students is how is distance learning going? It's changing all the time and we're still getting used to all the different platforms that exist out there. Now the question is, what does graduating from high school and going to college mean to you? To each of us, it can be something different. To my parents, I would be the first one in my family. To myself, it would be doing something that I can be proud of accomplishing. 
Um, so it means something different for everyone and we want to make sure that you get the opportunity to share that with each other and what it means to each of you. And then another question is what subjects interest you? Um, a lot of my students feel there's a lot of pressure to know what they want to do right outside of high school and that's not necessarily the case for a lot of my students. Um, so I want to make sure that they are able to give the opportunity to talk about what they're interested in both inside and outside of school, whatever it is they may be engaged in. Um, I guess that can change. Our grades may not necessarily reflect what we're interested in. Um, so centering the conversation about what things students want to do after high school can begin with a conversation on what subjects interest them. Talking about motivation, right now can be a very stressful time for a lot of us for any number of reasons, um, both within school and outside of school. So you want to make sure that our students keep motivated to keep going and to finish strong, um, whether that's finishing their first year of high school or their last year of high school. You can celebrate all the little moments in which your student and you achieve certain milestones. It's important to remember that you all are not alone in this process. I know that distance learning can feel very isolating and we're only talking with you through a screen, but I hope that we can build that sense of community as much as possible in whatever way that looks like for you and for your family. And then remembering to have fun throughout the process. I know that it can be really easy to focus on all the challenging aspects of everything, uh, but know that this time only comes once in your lifetime um, to make sure that you have fun as much as possible so that it's also memorable and enjoyable as you're doing some really big things um, for you and for your family. To talk about involvement. Involvement looks very different for everyone as well. For some families, that may mean the parent and guardian being involved in every decision. Um, for others, that may mean that the parent um, or the guardian watching and guiding, offering moral and emotional support for our students while they are the ones who are making the decision. Um, I want to make sure that you all are able to have that conversation so that both you and your student are on the same page about what involvement looks like. What would you like to see from involvement and what would your child like to see? Are they the same? And if not, what are ways that you all can resolve that? What are boundaries that you need to draw? Um, regarding involvement, I want to celebrate that you all being present today is a really great step towards involvement. Um, I know that taking time out of your schedule to listen to a presentation like this um, is something that can be challenging for some folks, so we want to commend you for that. And lastly, self-reflection. Um, especially during our times right now, and in general, the process can be new to some of us, and even if it isn't new, we can still feel scared nervous, confused about what the process looks like with all of the different changing dynamics. So I want to remind you that your feelings are valid. Um, in terms of navigating it, there are some guiding questions for you to be able to talk about what this experience has been like for you and for your child. Um, some questions include what is best, what is the best solution and situation for you and your child? How do you feel and why do you feel this way? That can help you to pinpoint some things that you may need to begin to change, some action items that you may have in mind for what's next. Um, and in general, to think about what this journey means for you and how you can navigate it in a way that works for you and your, for your family. Alrighty, everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. You are one step closer to your student success. So the next slide, we're gonna be able to provide our contact information. So if you do have any questions, feel free to connect with us via email or phone. Our DCAC email is dcac at berkeley.edu. Our phone number is 510-664-7276. If you would like to check out our Un University of California Berkeley Destination College Advising Corps website, feel free to scan the QR code on the bottom right of this slide. And once again, thank you for tuning in and joining us. Have a, rest of, have a great rest of your day today. Thank you.